Alrighty, well we've got the parts together for the Nova and we're now installing them in preparation for the MOT and typically it is now immediately putting up a fight. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is a wheel bearing, so we've taken the caliper and the disc off and we've discovered that our track rod end really doesn't want to come out. We've been using the big ball joint splitter with it and it's not having it so little um, castle and gas bottles are being called into service to see if we can get a bit of a heat into it to get that to come out these usually just come out without too much bother but I guess it's probably been in there since 1983 probably I don't know if that's ever been apart well it must have been you must no, have had it apart have been, no, that time. you had it apart should, hmm. should be anyway hmm. I know that they're not like full-on oxyacetylene bottles, but these little gadgets, mobile castling bottles that I got from eBay are fantastic. Just enough to get stuff like that. A couple of bangs on that, and as it came loose, and it wouldn't come off until we put the heat in it, and it came off no problem at all. So, just got to take these two bolts off here, and then I've got the hub assembly, the carrier, and I'll go and fire the wheel bearing into it using the press. Alrighty, I'm at the bearing press now and I'm going to go and go through the process of pushing the bearing out. These are nice and easy to do. We've just got the, the bearing carrier sitting in here supported in a couple of bits of metal and initially it'll push the hub out and take part of the bearing with it. I think we'll probably cut the back plate off this because it's Pretty rotten. There we go. There is our Nova hub. And we'll go and remove this. Hopefully with a chisel. Might need the grinder to get into it. And then remove the centre bits of the bearing. You wasting my gas on that? Have you tried it without heating it up first? So with the hub out the front, I can now remove the circlip which will enable us to push the rest of the bearing out. Hang on. Right, you want? There we go, circlip out. Of course we've got a circlip on the other side as well, so I'll remove that. I'm going to come out easier than another one. Came on. Get that screwdriver on the side up. One side out. Come on. Yay! I win eventually. Yeah, these back plates are nice to have when they're new. I don't think you can get them anymore. And this one's like quite rotten, so you don't need them. So I'm just going to cut this one off. Get shot of it. Get onto the rack gator. We've got stretchy gators, so we could probably shove them over the track rod end, but we're just going to remove it so. That's been cracked, so it's just a 19mm on there, more grips on there, and then that'll now, that'll spin off, because it's slack, and then we can remove this split rack gator there, shove the new one on. We're also going to reroute those fuel pipes, because it turns out one of the Jubilee clips is scuffing against the rack gator. Ah, just uh, spin it off. We'll remember what it was the nut was anyway, but we'll get the fuel alignment done on it because it's, uh, it's never been done. So that's what's nice about them. These just spin off. The Cavalier ones are a different matter altogether. They can be right dicks. Now, this is our universal steering rack gator, and this is the old kind of hard plastic one. So we'll just match these up. So we're going to cut this section off it because we don't need it. Uh, so that's the bit of gator cut off. So these match at the end now. Just a matter of shoving this thing 
onto the steering rack and then we'll get it tied up you get a couple of cable ties with it and that's it good to go we've just tucked the um fuel pipes away neatly there as well and put a different um pipe clip on there because they were dragging slightly against the old gator which is probably what bust it where well, you don't want any of that sort of stuff interfering with each other so the fuel pipes are all tucked away and they're clipped in where they need to be and it's just a matter of this thing this thing just shoves on past our rack end and gets a uh, cable tied into place but it's uh, nice it's that stretchy stuff they use with the the dry shaft boots as well right so back at the press i'm just going to press the old fuel bearing out There we go, that's our old wheel bearing removed. Slacking this off. Oh, I'll need to go and um, take the old bearing uh, off the pub. <laughs> What's up? Hmm? Yeah. Okay, so I've got the bearing nicely pressed in and I've just cleaned out the groove where the circlet sit with a little screwdriver to get all the crud out of it. And we're gonna fit the circlips front and back. Front clip. Oh yeah, I'll just give didn't do the front bit yet. Get it all clean out. There we go, front circle in. Now I'm go back to the press and fit the hub. Alrighty, so I've got the hub carrier and the hub sitting there and I'm just going to go and push these together. Beautiful. Right, that's the hub complete. Now it's got a nice smooth movement to it now. None of that gritty, sort of rough feeling that it had before. Uh, so that's ready to be installed. We've got the rack gator on. Um, we've got the fuel pipes put into position. Come on, temp sensor's already on it. So um, I think that's us pretty much sorted. Right, that's this side all finished. Wheel bearing in the new hub. We've got our rack gaiters on and we've got our pipes nice and neatly pushed out the way with a new clip on one of them. So that's the fuel ready to go back on and then I'm going to get on with the linkage and get that in position. Okay, so here's my fantastic repair to the linkage. I'd be tempted to see how long that actually bloody lasts, but I don't think you actually get fifth gear with it. None of the bits that we've got are the same as the Nova, which is a female end on the gear lever side. So I'm going to have to go and take the inside out of that rubber bit and try and press the plastic grommet inside it. So a bit of a mucking about coming up. Okay, so this is our linkage from the Mark III Astra. Oh no, it's not actually. This linkage came from something else random to fit the Nova. I'm taking the metal back off of this to get in and get to this piece of rubber, which is a metal sleeve inside it. I need to get this 
plastic sleeve for the ball socket of the linkage to go into that but it's currently too big so I love to see if I can get this piece of metal out the inside of it I can see Tiger Seal being involved in this a great deal of thought I've come up with a solution for the gear linkage because we don't have the right bit this is a bit off the car with this male end on it and this is the bit that we would like to replace it with but it's female but all I need to do is if I chop the end off that and just slot it into the end of this and tighten it up with the pinch bolt then that gives us the um, setup that we need I think I'll just start grinding and whatever it will you see up there, there is our linkage set up so this bit here will now fire into the waiting female end there and then this will clip on there uh, except it's just shoved that thing right out through there which isn't very good so I have to go and have a look at that great okay so in attempting to install this plastic bush here it's not in great condition it was the first one that I'd found in the original donor linkage I've since gone in to a gearbox which I think is out a Corsa originally uh, and this one is in much better condition this plastic bush so we're going to install this into the linkage and hopefully that's going to connect nicely to the ball socket uh, on the gearbox a lot of mucking about this is there we go okay as you can see from up here I've had to do some further modifications to my linkage I've welded a plate on it uh, put a bit of screwed rod through it and welded the stub the male end off the old linkage so it's long enough to fit in there and it seems to be working okay okay one two three four five reverse okay we've got a full set hopefully the ball socket isn't going to pop off um, on my welded um, male linkage end uh, isn't going to fail now we know that the Nova wasn't running happy and it was proven um, at the MOT because the emissions were off the scale um, we changed the coolant temp sender but not the sensor although if you look it up it comes up as a sensor we knew that wasn't right anyway so we've got um, there's a choice of two coolant temp sensors so I'm going to get into that now and change it and that will sort out the way that it's running it'll be a lot happier and then uh, possibly take it out for a shakedown run again um, which will be a good idea rather than wait until we're driving it to the MOT again as you can see the coolant temp sensor is hiding underneath the coil pack and it's got a super stiff clip on it um, well look into that Perfect. cool well that looks with any green or anything and the wires are nice and fresh as they should be because this engine's only done 32,000 miles that'll be a standard issue 19 and it's a square ended one cool <laughs> well, there's two different types of coolant temp sensor this one on the left is one I'm not that familiar with I don't know what that's for that's the standard issue one that you tend to replace every single time oh. on a Vauxhall hey, look, that, that's the original that's go. the original one see what happens with these is they default to minus 50 degrees celsius and it just maxes the fuel duty out look at the uh, state of that they're the same ah just that's uh the, aye fire it in but you've got it in your hand the top, look. this is the one that's uh i don't know what that i don't know what that one is a spare so for a later model or something, I don't know. I don't know this. That's just this will sort it out now anyway, and then ah, that should be pretty much. That's all the MOT stuff done. I don't take it back at the now. I was going to put that back on. I popped the little metal clip off it there because it was tight to come off. But what people do is they lose these, and if you don't have them, none of the plugs stay on. It's folk are bad for doing it with injectors, so you just put it like halfway on, shove it on, and then pop the clip into place, and that'll be fine. 
And then when we fire this up, it should sound a lot happier. Right, I fire it up. Hmm. Again. Has it soaked itself again since then? Yeah, now we need to get a bit of... Need to get a bit of a go. Get a bit of caught a bit. Maybe a... I keep going, keep calling it. Get a chance. I'm, I'm on the throttle here. Yep. Well, our starting didn't work because it soaked the plugs again, but with the coolant temp sensor just being fitted, I will still think it's minus 50 if the other one was duff, so it's still going to pump a load of fuel in until it understands what's going on. So we've just taken the battery off it, and of course the plugs are soaking wet, so we'll get them, give them a wipe and get the heat gun onto them and get them nice and hot, put them back in, hopefully it'll fire up and behave itself this time. Spark plug dried out again, these are the hot, we don't know if we're picking up our rag. And fire them back in, bloody hang better start this time. All right. Yeah. Obviously, must be. Let's try again now that we've got some nice dry spark plugs. Battery terminal back on. That'll have erased all the memory in the ECU, so it won't be thinking. Well, it won't be getting duff information from a knackered coolant temp sensor. Okay, Nova, please start. That's my fault. I uh, fire it up again. That Nova sounds at least 15% happier. I'll get stood in a big puddle. Again. So I've got the Vectra CDX down here tonight for a wee cameo appearance. That's three months now since I put it on the road again after it had been smashed and not that I had any problems with it during that time apart from the exhaust flexi which leaks because um, I bought the wrong one to begin with and I had to weld it in rather than clamp it but it's still it's still leaking and it's getting worse so we shall jack it up in there and get a look at that and I shall also just check if there's play in the wheels and things because there's a bit of a knock from it but Vectra Bs are particularly bad for having knockage suspension but we'll just give it a quick once over anyway I'll be getting an interim service in a little while as well uh, get the oil dropped out it again get some fresh fully synthetic in it
here we go in the Nova. Here we go. Nova has all had all the work done on it for the MOT and some other stuff. We've got a thermostat, our coolant temp sensor, two new front wheel bearings. A bizarrely noisy fuel pump. <laughs> ah, I'm soaking wet, I feel horrible. I thought he was emptying the stuff out the boot. Well, a lot of rattling. That's pulling more cleanly now, it's not bogging down like it was before. But you're needing to rev it harder to clear it. That's a good sign. Sounds good, I'm really impressive with how good my gear linkage is. I really hope it holds up. Once again had the absolute maximum possible waiting time at red light. But it should mean we might get a few clear bends in the Blackburn Road. But it's also quite badly flooded. Come right out here to get past that. Really slidey as well. Just, just scraped through and off on the retest. <laughs> well, that was the result getting it through the MOT there. The emissions were originally way out, but what I've noticed was there was a little vacuum pipe had come loose out the back of the engine, and it obviously wasn't going to be happy with that. No. Oh. It's not too happy idling at the moment. I think it's been overcompensating for that vacuum pipe not being connected. <laughs> and now it won't idle. So I'll need to look into that, but... Pretty much done, it seems to be okay. Can get some tax on it and look into using it and see how it's going to behave. Well, we'll go 
off on a McDonald's. good test for a, an extended bit of sitting in a queue at McDonald's. I've not seen that hot one's this busy but it's a, um, a cold wet Saturday afternoon. What else do people have to do with their time? Okay, so that's the Nova, got its MOT on it, a lot of hard work's going into it. That concludes this chapter with the car. The next step is to um, get some tacks on it and actually use it on the road and see how it beds in, get, get it running, used properly, uh, get it up to operating temperature regularly because that's definitely what it's needing. Hope you enjoyed all that uh, rigmarole and mucking about. Hopefully it doesn't give us too much more problems going further. Catch you next time. Neighbours to the unit are getting their door panned in by the police.